let's say we would like to have access to the indices of this charged sequence list. There is one convenient component for that. Let's go under sets, list and choose item index component. The item index component takes a list to search through and an item to search for and it outputs the indices from the initial list. So we're going to search through the char sequence output members and we're going to search for the indices of the same members. So we need to input the same data to both item index inputs. If we do that, the item index component works as expected and returns the indices. Let's investigate an instance when it doesn't work. I'm going to create a copy of the members panel disconnected from the source and manually input the items to search for. The item index returns outputs minus one, which means that the items could not be found. This happens because the item index component does not compare the actual values of items, but it compares their location. And it has nothing to do with the data type or magnitude. It has more to do with the uniqueness of these objects. So it doesn't take the letter A as a text in the first list and does not compare it to the letter A as a text in the second list. It compares their unique memory addresses and because these lists were created differently, the source and location of these letters are not the same, the indices could not be found. So the list to search L and the items to search for I should come from the same source. Let's see another example. It's going to be meaningless here in terms of extracting data, but it will serve to better illustrate how this component works. Let's go under sets, list, and choose the list item component. Let's input the char sequence output to the list input, and I'm gonna define the index using a panel. If I would take this letter C and input it as an item to search for, then it would work. It's just that we get the index value that we have already defined. So again, this example is just to illustrate that as long as the items come from the same source, it works. I'm gonna delete the unnecessary parts, reconnect the capsules, and we're done talking about the item index component for now. Let's move on to another one. If we want to compare actual values of items and extract indices of a particular value, we should use the member index component. You will find this component under sets and again sets. Member index requires two inputs similarly to the previous component. So first input requires a list to search through. Here we are going to use the chart sequence output. For the second input, which is a member value to search for, I'm going to use a panel and type in the letter C. So the member index component is actually searching for letter C as a text in the initial set and it outputs the matching index value which in this case is two and then also the count which is one i'm going to drag the canvas grid line to the right while holding the alt key to make some space for additional capsules i'm gonna then go under sets sequence and choose the repeat data component i'm going to change the number of letters for the char sequence to three and connect the output to the repeat data input. For the list length input, I'm going to use a panel and manually type in 20. Now we have a repeating pattern of three letters, ABC, ABC, and so on. First, the member index component now outputs a list of indices, and we have six occurrences of the letter C in the initial list. In terms of data structure, it is simple when we search for a single member, but it gets more complex if we search for more than one value. So let's say we would like to search for letters A and C. Don't forget to turn off the multi-line data option here if you're using a panel. And then notice a dashed wire coming from the member index component, which signals us that here we have more than one branch in the data tree structure. If you do not see the dashed wire, you need to go to the main menu bar under display and turn on the draw fancy wires option. So we get two branches in the data tree. The first one contains indices for the letter A and the second one for the letter C. And the count output values are in a single list. We will be learning to deal with data tree structure in the future tutorials, but in this instance, you could bypass it by searching for each member separately. 
Another important aspect to mention with regards to the member index component is the data type conversion. In this example, I'm using the series component to generate a list of members. And if we were to connect the series output directly to the member index, it would not work. This is because the value that we search for comes from a panel as a text that just looks like a number. And the series component outputs actual numerical values. For this scenario to work, I need to force data conversion from text to numbers or from numbers to text. So the takeaway here is that with this component, we need to ensure that the input data types match. The same applies when assigning values manually inside the component. If we want to assign a number as a string, as a text, we need to type it in quotes. On the final note, the member index component works well with simple comparable data types such as text and numbers, but also points, because points are defined by their coordinates, which are numbers. Okay, it's time to move on to the last component. I'd like to revisit one component that we have already discussed in previous tutorials and deepen the understanding of it. So let's go under sets, list, and choose the list item. The list item component could also be seen as a filtering component because it filters the input list based on the supplied indices. I'm going to define an index value using a panel here. Let's take index two, which represents the letter C. And also don't forget that this component has a zoomable user's interface so you can add output streams. So we define the index and we extract the item. But this is quite a limited way to look at this component. Let's see what else can we do. So let's say we would like to extract certain items from the initial list according to the custom index pattern. So I'd like to have only the letters A, D and F in the new list. I'm using a panel to create my custom index filter here, typing related indices. So 0, 3 and 5. Let's connect this filter to the index input and we have our new list. We can be more creative. Let's say we would like to triple the A value and double the D and this works too. So with the list item component, we can create a new list that has even more items than the initial one. And although in this example, I'm using a manually created index sequence, you could imagine us generating this list of indices using additional computational steps as well. Other components under sets list over here also operate in a similar way as data filters. Okay, so we have finished the review. Keep watching. In the next video, we're going to find out where we can use these components in practice.